good day. Today I'm going to show you how to find the axis of symmetry of the hyperbola. I'm also going to show you how to solve this type of question where they say find point A, the closest point to C. If you want more videos for functions, I've included the playlist of functions at the end of this video. So, let's begin. So, First of all, you have to understand that an axis of symmetry is a line that separates the graph into two equal parts. For instance, in the parabola, the axis of symmetry is a line that separates the parabola into two equal parts. So notice, this part is similar to this part. It's, it's being reflected along this line. Notice, the axis of symmetry always makes one half to be symmetric to the other half. So notice, one half is symmetric to the other half. When you talk of something being symmetric, for instance, let's say we've got a triangle like this. So this triangle, this part of the triangle is symmetric to this part of the triangle on this line. So therefore we call this line the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry, to just make it simple, it's, it's a line that divides the graph into two equal parts. So if they ask you the axis of symmetry of the parabola, all you have to do is to find the x value of the turning point. If the turning point is 2 is to negative 1, you just have to find the x value of the turning point and you will just say x is equals to 2 because this is how you name an equation of a vertical line. So let's say you're given a parabola with turning point 2 is to negative 1. If they ask you for the equation of the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry is the line that separates this into two equal parts and this is a vertical line. So notice, this part cuts at the x value of the turning point. So all you'll do is just to say x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2 is just the line of symmetry. Remember, whenever we name a vertical line, if we name a vertical line, let's just say this line is at 4. This line is called x is equal to 4. Because for every y value, x is always 4. So x does not change. So because x does not change, we call it x is equal to 4. So same thing here, no matter where I go in this line, my x value is always 2. That is why we say x is equal to 2 when we're naming a vertical line. Let's just say we're given an equation and the equation is 2x, let's just say 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. If they ask you for the axis of symmetry, you can see that this is a parabola. So the axis of symmetry of the parabola is just the x value of the turning point. So all you will do is just to say x is equal to negative b over 2a. And then from here it's going to be negative, negative 5 over 2 times 2. And this is just going to be 5 over 4. So this is the x value of the turning point. But this is also the equation of the axis of symmetry because it is a vertical line. Whenever we name a vertical line, we always say x is equals to something. We always choose the number that remains constant. All right, here is the last example before we go to the hyperbola. So here is the graph. Let's just say they ask for the axis of symmetry of this graph. Let's say this graph is at 4 is to 8. So what you'll do is, let's say this is the turning point. So if this is the turning point, then they ask you for the equation of the axis of symmetry. What you'll do is the axis of symmetry is just the line that separates this into two equal parts. And the line will always cut at the x value of the turning point of the parabola. So in this case, x is just equals to 4 because that is the equation of this vertical line. Because x will always be 4 no matter where I move in this vertical line. So let's go to the hyperbola. Just before I continue, if you want to be treated whether it is online or physically, whether it is the situation where you are struggling in maths or whether it is the situation where you are good in maths but want perfection, take a screenshot or save these details. Whether you are studying Cambridge, which is the UK curriculum, or whether you are studying NSC, which is the South African curriculum, or IEB, or native courses which start from N1 to N6, or any curriculum you are doing no matter which country you are at, we offer tutorials. We've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week. We also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvements. So notice, the parabola has only one way to divide it into two equal parts. If I try and draw a line like this, it will not work because this part will not look like this part. So therefore, the parabola has only one axis of symmetry. The hyperbola, on the other hand, has got two ways of separating it into two equal parts. The first way is if we draw a line like this. 
notice this part will look like this part so this part looks like this part and also this part looks like this part it's just that here is shorter but if we extend it you'll see that it's exactly the same as this part so this is the first way of dividing this into two equal parts the other way of dividing this into two equal parts is if we draw another line like this notice this part looks just like this part so this thing acts as your mirror so in the parabola there is only one axis of symmetry but in the hyperbola there are two axes of symmetries so this is just to solve the understanding of axisymmetry let's begin with how to find the equations of the axis of symmetry there are three methods to find the equation of the axis of symmetries of the hyperbola the easiest method is where you take everything except the numerator and if you take everything except the numerator f at x is the same as y so we're just gonna say y is equals to x minus 2 plus 4 and minus 2 plus 4 is 2 so y is gonna be equals to x plus 2 and this is just the first equation of the axis of symmetry so we found the first one remember the hyperbola has got two axes of symmetries so the axis of symmetry the first one is the one with the positive gradient the increasing one and the second one is the one with the negative gradient the decreasing one how do you know a line is increasing when you follow the graph using your fingers from left to right if it is going up then the graph is increasing if you follow it from left to right and it's going down then you know the graph is decreasing so this one is a positive gradient and this one has a negative gradient so this one has got a positive gradient because the coefficient of x is 1. Remember the straight line graph is always in the form of y is equals to mx plus c. And m tells us the gradient. For instance, if we have got a graph y is equals to 2x plus 1, we already know that the gradient is 2 because it's the coefficient of x. So from here we see that the gradient is 1. So meaning that this is the positive gradient. So this is the one of the increasing line. So how do we get the equation of the axis of symmetry, the one with the negative gradient? How do we get the equation of the one with the negative gradient? You get it using a similar method. All you have to do is at the denominator, you have to put brackets and put negative. And you still take everything except the numerator. So if you take everything except the numerator, you'll end up having y is equals to minus x minus 2 plus 4. And then from here we've got y is equals to minus x plus 2 plus 4. And then from here we'll end up having y is equals to minus x plus 6. And then we have it, the one with the negative gradient. And we can clearly see that the gradient is negative because the coefficient of x is negative 1. So this is the one of the decreasing one. Alright, here is another example. So they say find the axis of the equation of axis of symmetry. So in the equation they can say the one with the positive gradient, they can say the one with the negative gradient, or they can say the one that is increasing, they can say the one that is decreasing. So for instance, if they say the one that is increasing, you know it's the one with the positive gradient. So you just take everything here and you exclude the numerator. So it's gonna be y is equals to x plus one minus three. And then it's gonna be y is equals to x. One minus three is minus two. So, you're going to have x minus 2. So, this is the equation. Well, the method is the same. You just put brackets where, there is, where the denominator is, and you'll put a negative outside. And then you just simply take everything here except the numerator. So, you're going to end up having y is equals to minus x plus 1 minus 3. And then here we're going to have y is equals to minus x minus 1 minus 3. And then from here we're going to end up having y is equals to minus x minus 4. And there we have it. The equation of the axis of symmetry, the one with the negative gradient. So, just before we attempt this example, if you're interested in knowing the prices of my tutorials, the video of the prices is found at the end of this video. So, they can give you a graph. So they give you a graph f of the x is equals to 2 over x minus 2 plus 1. And they ask you, find point A, the closest point to B. So they ask you to find point A, which is the closest point to B. 
Now B is the meeting point of the asymptotes. It is where the asymptote meet and it's also where the axis of symmetry meet. So it is also where the axis of symmetry would meet. So they would meet right at this point. If they ask you to find A, which is the closest point to B, or maybe this point that is the closest point to B, what you have to notice is that the closest point is actually the intersection of the axis of symmetry and the hyperbola. So the hyperbola always has two axes of symmetry. So it is always the point of intersection of one of the axes of symmetry. So notice this axis of symmetry actually intersects the hyperbola right at this point and also this point. So there are two points of intersection. So whenever they ask you the closest point to the meeting point of the asymptote, it is always the axis, it is always it is always the point of intersection of one of the axes of symmetry and the hyperbola. Notice the other axis of symmetry does not intersect the hyperbola at any point. So it's always going to be one of them. So you have to know whether it is the increasing one or the decreasing one. In this case, it is the increasing one. So it is the increasing one because it's increasing from left to right. So in this case, it is the increasing one. It is the increasing one because it's increasing from left to right. So there are two points of intersection. There is this point over here and there is this point over here. So there are two points of intersection. So how do you find a point of intersection of two graphs? So remember the one with the positive gradient, you just pick this stuff. So it's going to be y is equals to x minus 2 plus 1. So therefore we're going to have y is equals to x minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So y is equals to x minus 1. And there we have it. So now we have to solve simultaneously for this graph and this graph because it is the point of intersection of the two graphs. So I have rewritten this equation down here. So instead of writing f x, I just wrote y. So we've got two equations we want to solve simultaneously. Well, the easiest way to solve simultaneously in this case is just equating because we've got y as, as the subject of formula in both equations. So we can just equate, we can just say, x minus 1 is equal to 2 over x minus 2 plus 1. So from here, when we take this 1 to the other side, we're going to end up having x minus 1 minus 1, which will just be minus 2 over, uh, over uh, 2 over x minus 2. So this is what we have so far. So from here, we have to cross multiply. So we just put this over 1, so we have to cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, we're going to end up having x minus 2 Okay, so that'd be x minus 2 and x minus 2. And then this part, when we cross multiply here, we're going to end up having 2. This part is going to give me x squared minus 4x plus 4. Then we have equals to 2. And when we take 2 to the other side, we're going to end up having x squared minus 4x plus 2. So, let's figure out what answers does this give us you'll end up having x is equals to 3,41 or x is equals to 0 0.59. So how do you know which one is correct? 3.41 and 0 0.59. So when you look at this stuff, 0 0.59 has to be this one. 3.49 has to be, 3.41 has to be this one because it's further. So it means the x value of this is 3.41. So we have 3.41. Now we have to find the y value. So to find the y value, you can substitute it into any one of these equations. You can substitute it into this equation or this equation. But of course, the easier one is this equation. So if I substitute it, I'm going to have 3.41 minus 1. And then this is just going to be 2.41. And then we have it. We have found point A, which is the closest point to point B. So just remember, whenever they ask you point A, which is the closest point to this point, it's just the intersection, just a point of intersection of the axis of symmetry and the hyperbola. All right, here is another question. So they gave you a graph f at x is equals to negative 1 over x minus 2 plus 1. And they say find point A, the closest point to point C. So the one point A, which is the closest point to the meeting point of the asymptote. So the meeting point of the asymptote is also the same point where the axis of symmetries also meet. So they want you to find point A, which is the closest point to 
the meeting point of the asymptote. So the closest point to the meeting point of the asymptote is actually the intersection of one of the axes of symmetry and the hyperbola. So this graph intersects the hyperbola at these two points. And of course, the other axis of symmetry does not intersect the hyperbola at any point. So, in this case, we're not looking for the equation of the axis of symmetry, the one with the positive gradient, like we were looking for before. We are now looking for the equation of the axis of symmetry, the one with the negative gradient, because this one is the one that is intersecting the hyperbola. So this time it is not the positive one that is intersecting the hyperbola. This time it is the negative one that is intersecting the hyperbola. So we need to find the equation of the axial symmetry with the negative gradient. So what we'll do is that we just put brackets by the denominator and put negative outside. So then we're going to have y is equals to minus. So we're going to have minus, minus x minus 2 plus 1. And then from there we're going to have y is equals to minus x plus 2 plus 1. And then from here, we're going to have y is equals to minus x plus 3. And there we have it. We've got the equation of the axial symmetry, the one with the negative gradient. So now let's equate the two graphs and solve simultaneously. So I have rewritten the two equations. In this case, since we've got y as the subject of formula here and also here it is the subject of the formula, we can just equate the equations. So therefore, we'll end up having minus x plus 3 is equals to negative 1 over x minus 2 plus 1. So from here, we have to take this with the other side of the equation. So it's going to be x plus 3 minus 1 and 3 minus 1 is just 2. So it's going to be x plus 2. Then we're going to have minus 1 over x minus 2. And then from here, what we're going to do is that now we're going to cross multiply this stuff. So if we cross multiply this stuff, we're going to end up having, so we'll end up having minus x plus 2 in brackets and x minus 2. And then when we cross multiply this, we're going to end up having minus 1. From here, we're going to end up having minus x squared. So we're going to have minus x squared. We're going to have plus 2x. We're going to have plus 2x and minus 4 is equals to negative 1 and when we simplify this part we're going to end up having minus x squared plus 4x and when we take this one to the other side of the equation we're going to have minus 3 so this is what we have so far so therefore we're going to end up having x squared minus 4x plus 3 is equals to 0 and this can be factorized without the quadratic equation so therefore we're going to end up having x so it's gonna be x minus 3 and x minus 1 and there we have it so we've got x is equals to 3 or x is equals to 1 so there we have it so now how do we know which one is correct so we've got 3 and we've got 1 so we know that uh, this is gonna be 1 because this one is further away so it's definitely gonna be 3 and they asked for point A which is 1 so mm -hmm. we know the correct x value is 1 so we can substitute it into any one of the equations but of course the easiest one is the straight line graph so therefore we're gonna say y is equals to so it was 1 so we're gonna have minus 1 plus 3 and then we're gonna have y is equals to 2 so it means the coordinate of a which is the closest point to the point of intersection of the asymptote is 1 and 2 and there we have it so we have found the closest point and this brings us to the end of this video so if you enjoyed this video please like my video and subscribe to my channel support me by sharing the video as well if the contacts that i've provided are not working please comment below see you on the next video